Are the Denlingers racist? Well, maybe some. I don't know. I can't speak for all Denlingers, but uh, this couple here, uh, no. We have been accused of that, and we keep getting accused of it. <laughs> and uh, there's a few things I left out of my studies on interracial marriage and some of the other things, too, on integration versus segregation, that type of stuff. A few arguments I left out, um, some things I did not say, but I think it's very important to define terms, okay? Um, if you look up the word racist in your King James Bible, you will find that it's not in the King James Bible, okay? It's not a Bible word. So it's kind of strange for a professing Christian to accuse a preacher and his wife of being something that the Bible doesn't even mention. Kind of weird why they would go to the modern politically correct world and pull a word from the, uh, you know, vocabulary of the modern world to condemn a ministry. Kind of strange, too. But uh, if you look up the word racist, which you did, uh, read the words or the definition there of racist according to the modern dictionary. This is just going to google.com, type in definition of racist. Okay, go ahead, read it. Noun. A person who believes that a particular race is superior to another. Synonyms, racial bigot, racialist, xenophobe, chauvinist, supremacist, etc. Adjective. Having or showing the belief that a particular race is superior to another. Okay, now, um, did we ever say anything at all about that in our studies? Uh, no. Uh, we said that we are both of German kindred. German ancestry, you know, is, is that's our ethnicity, the nation that we're from, our kindred. Uh, that's those bio, those are our, you know, the Bible words. I, I don't think ethnicity is, but you know, nation, people, tongue, kindred is a reference to your particular place that you come from. We're both of German uh, descent, and so therefore we say, okay, you know, we have a lot in common. We are, there's a lot of things that we share and and everything else, uh, a lot of similar. Um, personality traits and things like that that are unique to the German people. And it's kind of funny because we, you know, once in a while, we'll, you know, it's kind of, we watch a video or something and somebody goes to Germany and they say, per, you know, strange things about people in Germany. And, and it's like what they are describing is how we've always been all of our lives and, and didn't know why. Our unique personality traits were not very touchy-feely. We're kind of, you know, we like to shake hands, not so much hugging, you know. And things like that. I mean, uh, tend to be overthink things sometimes. I guess a little bit uh, perfectionist in some things. But um, and you know, people go to Germany and they say that's the way the German people are. So it's like, whoa! Didn't even realize that a lot of times. But um, that's what we've said. We've never said that the German race is superior and all of the others should be squashed and destroyed. Uh, when it comes to the Bible, the King James Bible teaches that the nation of Israel, if you want to have a superior race, it would be the nation of Israel. And superior only because God has chosen them for specific things. God has separated them. Okay? Well, that's what we teach. So, uh, Brian Moonan coming out and uh, claiming that we are racist is an absolute total lie. Uh, we do not say, by dictionary definition right there, being racist means one who believes that your particular race is superior to others. Okay, we don't believe that. I've never taught that, never preached that. And I can tell you right now, Eric Phelps and Peter Ruckman also do not teach that. Brian Moonan's whole video was propaganda. That's what the whole thing was. Taking video clips and cutting and, and cutting and pasting, cutting and pasting, and then, and then not covering the scriptures correctly, uh, it was propaganda. And no real surprise, because Brian Moonan is a uh, man that has had a past in professional television. Kind of strange because the, the uh, news media likes to play on the race card thing as well. They like to stoke racial tension, you know. And again, we're not trying to do that. What we're trying to do is say, hey, everybody stay separate. Maintain your unique individuality. That's what we're saying, you know. We're celebrating the differences. We're not saying everybody should be blended together and lose those differences and those distinctions. Very, very important to understand that. But, uh, you know, people will say, you know, I'm going to cover some of the attacks that, that uh, have been coming. And um, people will say, you know, well, Jesus wasn't a racist. You know, you, you know, Jesus wouldn't have been a racist. Let's look about that. If you have a King James Bible, 
you want to you're gonna want to open it all right don't just sit there drinking your soda pop or coffee or whatever else you know and just listen and and just uh, get your King James Bible and look it up so you make sure that I'm telling you the truth Matthew chapter 15 excuse me Matthew well, actually we'll start at chapter 10 it looked like it was looked like you wrote chapter 5 there thing it can't be in chapter 5 that's the Sermon on the Mount oh. but um, I'll let you go this time okay Danke. so <laughs> um, Matthew chapter 10 verses 5 through 6 Jesus made no distinction between you know races let's see about that these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying it's Jesus speaking go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel why would Jesus say such a thing well, keep your hand there in Matthew chapter 10 and go back to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8 says, When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children, children of Israel. Twelve natural boundaries. Verse 9, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So, is there a chosen race, if you will? Yes, it's the Jews, not the Germans, not the black Africans, or the Chinese, or the Japanese, or the French, or the Italians, or the Native Americans, or whoever. It's the Jews the nation of Israel. That's the Lord's inheritance. The Lord makes a distinction about people's race. And I'm just going to use that term because that seems to be the big buzzword, so I'll just use it against you if you're a, one of these people. And you say, but that's Old, that's old Testament. That's Old Testament. Well, as I showed in my study, most people didn't even get through it. I could tell by the comments. Uh, they just had a, a fit like a bunch of little babies kicking the slats out of their crib. They they don't look at this stuff. Acts chapter 17, verse 26, And hath made of one blood all nations for to dwell on all the face of the earth, all nations of men, excuse me, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. This was determined before Acts 17, verse 26. When was it determined? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 8 and 9. So what you're reading there is God set something up back in the Old Testament, and it's never been undone. It's still in effect today. Oh, all the, all, there's only one race, the human race. <laughs> uh, no, there's 12 boundaries with distinct kindreds in those boundaries, with distinct traditions and customs and everything else that God sees as beautiful. When everybody comes together, they all gonna to want to be one and everything else. Uh, it's ironic. There was a there's some kind of a video here. Um, there's a channel on YouTube, Jason A or something like this. I'll watch some of his videos once in a while. The prophecy update stuff. Uh, you know, he comes out with a lot of you know really up to date stuff. And there was some kind of a New Year's. Uh, Eve celebration thing and some dirty harlot, you know, dressed all in black, you know, she's there, she's singing about, imagine that there's no heaven above us, no hell beneath us, when we can all come together as one. That's the system of the Antichrist. All nations coming together as one. Hmm. You say, well, Jesus would have been for a thing like that. No, actually, he wouldn't have. I'm going to show you two other verses here really quickly Matthew chapter 15 you want some more uh, things where Jesus is uh, you know making distinction between people's uh, kindred Matthew chapter 15 verse 21 then Jesus went thence and departed in, into the coast of Tyre and Sidon and behold a woman of Canaan I say what is a woman of Canaan keep your hand right there go back to the book of Genesis 
Genesis chapter 9, uh, verse 25. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Canaan is Ham's son. Egypt is the land of Ham, the Bible says elsewhere. So Canaan would be an African. Back to our text here in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan, she's an African, came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. She noticed who he was. She didn't say, hey, you over there, healing man, you have mercy on me. She said, thou son of David. The Bible identifies her unique race, and she identifies Jesus Christ's unique race. Verse 23, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What a terrible thing to say. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Now, what do you think would happen if you had in the, seat, the streets of uh, New York City and you get this Jew, this Jewish rabbi, and some black woman's there and she's you know, got a flat tire on her car and uh, she says, uh, Excuse me, sir, could you help me? And he turns to her and, first of all, he ignores her. And she says, sir, could you help me, please? And he turns around and he says, I don't help dogs. What do you think would happen? She'd start crying hate crime, wouldn't she? Unless she was saved. You know, but she's lost. Hate crime, oh, hate crime, oh, terrible. You know, he called me a dog, this wicked Jewish rabbi. You say, Jesus did that? You're reading it. It's plain as day. Again, I saw some of the comments. You know, you see, there's an absence of, of New Testament scriptures. There's not many New Testament scriptures. Why does God have to repeat everything that he already wrote in the Old Testament for you to learn? I mean, does he have to redo everything from the Old Testament, say it again so you get it? You know, it's incredible. And all these people, all the people, I don't think I saw one time that anybody dealt with the, the passages in Ezra and Nehemiah. It was all, well, that was for the Jews. It was because of idolatry and stuff like this. They couldn't handle those scriptures. Verse 27, let's see what this Canaanite woman, what her answer is to Jesus. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole that, from that very hour. Hmm. You see, Jesus Christ made a distinction about her kindred, about her people, her nation. And she made a distinction too about his. Isn't that interesting? She didn't say, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. We're all one race. We're all one thing. No, no, no. And see, when she was in her place, when she said, okay, I accept who I am, See, she didn't have to say racism, racist bigotry. You know why? Because she was well pleased with her race, if you want to use that term. She wasn't ashamed of who she was. See, people that have to throw out the term racist, they're ashamed of who they are. Okay? That's the whole deal there. She said, truth, Lord, I'm a dog. Yeah, bow wow, rough, rough. Yeah, I'm a dog. And God said, Jesus, you know, Lord God manifest in the flesh. He says to her, great is thy faith. You see, when God makes you a certain kindred and you accept it and you say, okay, what are the prophecies for my kindred? God shall enlarge Japheth. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Canaan shall be a servant of servants unto his brethren. Which one are you? Follow what God has for you. If my wife all of a sudden decides that she's going to usurp my position as the husband, as the head of this home, she's out of order. If I decide I'm going to become meek and submissive to her, I'm out of order. We all have our part to play before the Lord. That's what this woman of Canaan did. She said, truth, Lord, I am what I am. I'm here. I'm your servant. 
I'm not going to be prideful. I'm not going to say, how dare you say that about me? You racist bigot. No, truth, Lord. And the Lord said, great is thy faith. And you know, some of you have written in the comments and things, written me private messages, and you've said, hey, I'm of a mixed kindred. I'm of this or I'm of that. I accept what the Bible says. I can't help the fact that I was born into a mixed family or whatever else. I accept what the Bible says. It's there. It's plain. I'll just, you know, the Lord saved me. And the Lord will save anybody. Okay? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. None of this stuff I've ever done is excluding anybody from salvation. Absolutely not. But when you get to a point where you say, okay, God made me a man. God made me of this particular kindred. I'm going to see what the Bible says I'm supposed to do and I'm going to do it. You say, what? but see, this is still doctrinally, see, we know what you teach, Brian. You teach that this is doctrinally in the Old Testament. So we're still dealing with Old Testament. Okay. How about uh, we go beyond the New Testament area where we're at? Because I know a lot of people are saying, oh, it's it's done away. It's, it's this, it's that, and everything else. I'll show you a real good one. You see how the Lord treated that Canaanitish woman there? How about going back to the Old Testament? To the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, and verse 21. Actually, we'll start at verse 20. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall, no, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord, of hosts. And what are you going to do with that? Oh, the Lord makes no distinction. Why does he bring back the nations? Why do we get up to heaven and, and there's a distinction? John sees distinction between people, tongues, nations, kindreds. Why? In eternity, he brings back the unique kindreds, the unique nations and everything else. And in the millennial kingdom, he won't even allow the Canaanite into his house. What are you going to do with that? You see, we've gotten to a point where we we get so prideful and so egotistical that we start to say, well, God wouldn't do a thing like that, and God wouldn't do this and things. You're designing a God after your own image and your own likeness. We don't just submit to the book and say, well, the Bible says it. That settles it. It's a lot easier to just say, hey, the Bible, you know, there's no such thing as eternal torment and fire and brimstone in a, in a you know, pitch black lake of darkness or lake of fire, excuse me, a lake of darkness still. It's a lot easier to just say, oh no, it's just annihilation. You just burn for a little bit and then you're gone. God wouldn't torture people forever. Yes, he would. Oh, yes, he would. And you go back to the book of Proverbs, he laughs at people. He mocks when their fear comes. Is that the God you worship? It's the God I worship. You know why? Because that's what the Bible presents. Well, the atheists aren't going to like that. I don't care about atheists. I care enough to tell them the truth. Yeah, but I'm not going to change my Bible or change my beliefs to fit their stupidity. Hey, it'd be a lot easier just to say, hey, all the races are the same. There's no distinction. God wants us all to come together. Let's all come together. Let's fit in with the modern world. Wouldn't that be easier to say? But it's not what the Bible teaches. You know, and again, you know, people, oh, it's Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament. Okay, can you give me some New Testament scriptures that say you shouldn't get a tattoo? Every Christian out there that's against tattoos that knows what the Bible says about tattoos goes back to Leviticus under the law, the Mosaic law, to prove that, it ta that tattoos are wrong. You can't give me one clear scripture in the New Testament that says you shouldn't get print marks upon your body. You can't give me one. And yet you'll quote under the law to prove you shouldn't get a tattoo. But there's scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture making clear distinctions. You're not to intermarry. You're not to intermarry. And by the way, people say, but there were people that did intermarry. Yes, there have been people that have sinned all throughout the Bible. Don't go through the Bible looking for exceptions to overthrow the rule. That's another big important thing. And again, see, this stuff takes study. This take, stuff takes time. But you get put together a nice little propaganda video like Brian Moonan did, lying, totally lying about us, slandering us, falsely accusing us, 
not the thing that a Christian would do. And he doesn't handle the scriptures. He hops, skips, and jumps, looks for exceptions to the rule. He won't deal with Ezra. He won't deal with Nehemiah. He won't deal with a lot of the other scriptures. Pretty crooked. But uh, let's see if, what else I wanted to say here. Oh, let me, let me ask you a question. Uh, for those of you out there that uh, you say, well, we're interracially married and everything else. Uh, well, you do understand, I hope, that, uh, that the Bible prophesies that there would be a one-world government in the end times and that this one-world government would have all nations coming together. Uh, so that, is that going to take segregation or integration? Segregation says stay separate, stay unique, stay diverse. Integration says everybody come together and get blended. Which one is it going to be to produce the Antichrist kingdom? Hmm? It's going to be integration. It's what they're doing with the Muslim invasion of Europe right now. They are forcibly integrating Europe. Yeah. And you say, well, yeah, I'm against that, but I'm for interracial marriage. How can you be? Hmm? If you are interracially married as a Christian couple, how can you stand against integration? You see? You say, well, what are we supposed to do? Get a divorce or something like this? Hey, man, what I'm saying to you is don't go out there if you've messed up and, you've, and you're in sin. Don't go out there and proclaim your sin boldly and say the Bible's not against what we're doing. The Bible's crystal clear against what you're doing. And I'm real sorry about that. Hey, if I had tattoos on my body, I would say, you know what? It's wrong. I used to be a pornography addict. Well, you know, it's, it's right because I used to do it, right? No, it's wrong. It's a sin. It's wickedness. I'm not going to justify my sin because I once did it. You know? It's a real issue. But uh, I'm going to go over a couple of the other scriptures that people are using. If you have a story or two, you can go ahead and tell them, you know, of uh, things. Just to, just to show you, you know, we have both had run-ins. I've worked with people of other kindreds. I've never, you know, tried to hurt them or do anything bad to them or whatever else. Um, you know, I get along with them. You know, I don't hate people. So go ahead and tell some of your stories. I got to look up a scripture too. I have a number of stories actually. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, from my testimony from 2013, the uh, Christian lady who, um, I should say, modestly dressed Christian lady, uh, who witnessed to me on the Amtrak train in July of 2011, was a black woman from Washington D.C. Her name is Diane Marshall, and uh, very very intelligent lady um she is a former drug 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 addict drug dealer whatever you want to call it um you know and she was fascinating to talk to in fact we we picked each other's brains figuratively speaking from the time that she got on the train and sat next to me to the time that uh we both got off at the same metro station in, in downtown washington dc and uh, she was the one who gave me a bunch of, of King James Bible scriptures to answer my questions. Because I, you know, I asked, well, uh, where do I find answers to such and such? And I was lost at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, for all you, uh, all you integrationists out there who think that I'm racist, if I was racist, how could I spend an entire train ride, you know, picking... This, this lady's brain, figuratively speaking, and having and enjoying the conversation, enjoying the intellectually stimulating conversation with her, if I was racist. Mm -hmm. You know, and I look at people's character, and I have a bunch of other stories to tell you throughout this video that prove mm -hmm. that I am far from being racist. Yeah, and, and you know, to, to make the point, because I know somebody's going to write in the comments, well, see, if integration was true, then you would have never had a chance to be witnessed to by a black woman. Well, again, you know, we are in this situation here in America and in our world where everything is so integrated, okay? We don't have a choice. We can't go back to the way things should be in the Bible, okay, without supernatural intervention. And that's what the Lord's going to do. But the point is, you go back even to the Bible times, the New Testament times, there were people that were traveling. 
So see, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip, a Jew, witnesses to an Ethiopian eunuch. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? That's not what we're saying. I'm not saying if there's a if there's a black person that I see someplace, you know, just a little story here not too long ago. It was like uh, we were out shopping the one night, uh, had to do some grocery shopping, and uh, we were up in Presque Isle up above us here, and it was like minus 12, I think, outside or something, and there was a black guy there behind us, right in line behind us, and he's like, how on earth do you people make it up here? He's like, it is so cold. And we turned around, we smiled and stuff. We were like, yeah, it is cold, isn't it? And he was like, I'm from, he's, I, what was he, from Tennessee or something? I think so, yeah. He's like, I'm from Tennessee, man. He goes, I can't believe you, you know, how cold it gets up here. <laughs> and we were laughing about it and stuff. He's traveling through the area. That's fine. That's fine. All right? I'm not against that. I'm not saying, you know, you we have a specific borders and anybody comes through gets shot or something like this. No, 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 no. But I'm saying preserving the distinctions okay and again we can't we can't go back all right we cannot fix the problem we can't fix the mess you know that that the devil has created in the last thousand or two thousand years we can't do it you know but you know to, i just needed to explain that you know because i know people are going to write oh you, you shouldn't talk to them if you're for you know segregation that's not what segregation is. Segregation is simply saying, I'm not going to intermarry with you, and we're not going to have mixed communities where all the culture just dissolves and disintegrates, you know? Unlike the Catholic Church. Yeah. Um, another story I have about this. Um, when I used to live in the Washington, D.C. metro region years ago, uh, between early 2005 to about May early June of 2008 is when I was out there living there. Um, you know, military, academic stuff, whatnot. One time I had to take the metro train, metro rail, to uh, to where I was going. I don't even know where my stop was anymore. And uh, the, the car I got on was packed. I could have just stood, you know, holding on to the railing above my head like this and, you know, with all my, with all my strength and just, like, I'm just going to stand right here and regardless of the train swaying me back and forth, you know. But uh, there's a black guy um, initially at the sitting on the edge seat and there was an empty seat beside him. You know, without him saying anything, he scooted over to the one next to the window and I thought, you know, out of the bottom of my heart, the goodness of my heart, I thought, you know, oh boy, he just, he fell asleep. What if he misses his, his stop? You know, and I don't tell him. And so, and the Lord knows I'm speaking truth here because he saw the whole thing happen. And he knows the name of the guy. So, you know, I don't even know what his name was. But the point is, you know, mm -hmm. I uh, I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, hey, uh, is this your stop coming up? And he goes, no. And then after that, you know, unfortunately he goes to me. Like I'm some germ that he just you know, shrugged off his coat or something. And then that was when you got your Ku Klux Klan outfit out and you cut the guy's head off, right? Oh, yeah. According to some of the brethren, they might think so. Of course not. No, actually, I just sat right there. I didn't say anything else. I just thought, okay, well, my stop is coming up and wherever he's going to, you know, I hope the best for him. You know, I didn't think, oh, you know. Eh. No, I, I thought to myself, well, I tried to help the guy out, you know. Mm -hmm. Because if I see a, a passenger next to me falling asleep and I'm still awake, you know, somehow with the with the rocking back and forth of the train or the bus, and I'm like, hey, uh, you know, without saying it explicitly, I, I got your back. I'm going to watch out for you so you don't miss your stop. Because other people have done it for me on a public transportation system. And they're like, hey, uh, wake up, you know, is this your stop? You know, I'm like, no. Yep. You know. So, you know, I look out for people. And mm -hmm. this was when I was a lost woman, okay? And, you know, and, and see it all, this whole thing all stemmed. Uh, really, I think what's going on here, why we're being attacked, is not because of our stands about kindred purity and things like that. I don't think that that's it. I think it's because we're very militantly pre-trib. And the post-tribbers will come up with anything that they can. They look for any kind of problems and whatever else. And ironically, Dr. Ruckman, Eric Phelps, and myself are very hardcore pre-trib so what's the best way to attack us well what would the news media do see and they make racism 
you're a racist. That's now a hate crime. Uh, every, every person out there, I don't care if you're the most wicked atheist in the world, you should be against hate crime legislation. Okay, hate crime legislation is censored speech. Free speech is one of the hallmarks of a free society. When government officials can start to tell you, we're going to put you in prison because you said certain things, you are living as a slave. You say, slavery and racism and stuff like that. Okay, you want real slavery? Live in a society where your speech is controlled. Okay, that is, that is tyranny at its worst. So don't give me this hate speech stuff. Everybody needs to stand against hate speech. All right, that's it's ridiculous. Let me just interject here. Um, it's two of the places that people have been going, and I've been seeing this in the comments. I've been getting it all the time. So I'm going to answer it here. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. See, they say, so that means just as long as the guy's saved or the, you know, whatever, then that woman can marry him. Um, didn't the Lord write Ezra and Nehemiah and all the other stuff about keeping the people separate? Didn't the Lord write Acts chapter 17, verse 26? So why would you say, this passage says, to whom she will, only in the Lord. That's only about salvation. Why not make it about what the Bible teaches about interracial marriage? You see, in the Lord's will, it's going to be for you to be married to one of your kindred. And it doesn't mean the modern, the, again, the modern English has perverted the term kindred into meaning your kin, the next of kin, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins. That's not what the Bible word means, okay? When the Bible uses, excuse me, uses the term of kindred, I think in all references that I'm aware of, it's talking about your ethnicity, if you want to call it that way, all right? That's what it's talking about. I mean, let's let's do it from the reverse. People, all these people, trying to find exceptions to the rule and everything else, of you know, well, Moses married an Ethiopian woman, okay, and what did God ever do about that? Did God ever bless it? You know, no. But uh, and this guy married, and and that person, and Timothy married, and you know, or Timothy was half Jew and half Greek, and all this other stuff. Um, so you know, what do you say about that? Okay, well, let's do it in the reverse. Can you please show me one time where two people of the same kindred, the same nationality, married and God was against it? Can you show me one? Huh? <laughs> of course not. Of course you can't. That scripture right there, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39, is not proving that you can marry whoever you want to from any other boundary. That contradicts Acts chapter 17, verse 26. And how as well about the, as a score of other scriptures in the Old Testament. How about the story of of, jo of Joseph and Mary? You know, if God was against Joseph and Mary, you know, marrying each other, both being Jews, might I add, you know, uh, wouldn't he have said so? Yeah. I mean... No, there's there's so many. I mean, it's just these arguments. Another one that people go to is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and I will walk in them, and walk in them, excuse me, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And people say, see, not one thing in there, in that passage about marriage, there's not one thing about being of the same kindred. Well, that's a nice, cute little thing, but uh, the problem is, there's not one thing in there about marriage. I'll grant you instruction in righteousness, yeah, you should both be saved, but it's not about marriage. You say, how do you know that? Because I can read plain English. Look at this. All right. Verse 16. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Ye, For ye are the temple of the living God. Ye? Ye? That's plural. It's not talking about two people. Singular people. The. Okay. It's not talking about that. It's talking about plural people. It's talking about Christians should not fellowship. They should not worship with lost people. This passage, verses 14 through 18, condemns church buildings. Everyone's welcome. Well, then you're, con you're condemned in this passage here. 
That's what's going on there. Look at verse 17. You say, I don't believe that. Look at verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye, plural, separate. How do you have plural people being separate in a marriage? Doesn't make much sense. Okay, if you're both, if everybody in the marriage is separate, then there's no marriage. <laughs> okay. Think about that. And you know, well, well, we're not to marry lost people. Uh, verse First Corinthians chapter seven, verse. Uh, let's see here, where are we going to go? First uh, Corinthians chapter seven, verse twelve. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. And then it goes on to say about the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Uh, how does that work out then if we're not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers in the sense of marriage? You mean people would be willing to go and pervert the scriptures to justify interracial marriage? Isn't that something? Getting kind of desperate, aren't you? You people out there that are for interracial marriage. See? And people, oh, you're, this is really getting dangerous. Why is it getting dangerous? Is it getting dangerous because you're ashamed of this book? Well, you really ought to consider the words of Jesus Christ when he said about, if any man is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sin, sinful generation, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed? You ought to think about that. And there's never been a more adulterous and sinful generation than today. Except maybe before the flood. Which is ironic because we're compared to that. The end times. Very, very interesting. Go ahead and we'll wait till our clock is done chiming here. Okay, go ahead. You can tell another story. I'm going to look right. up another scripture here quick. I have a, you know, a story from winter of 2011. Uh, more specifically from about early January to mid-February when I lived in Dorchester, Massachusetts, i.e. downtown Boston for a few weeks. Uh, my landlord was Janice Worrell Bellet. She and her entire family are uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. And, um, you know... Of course, they profess to be Christians and everything, but the point is, is they're all blacks from, I believe, Trinidad and Tobago originally, or Barbados, one of the two. And, um, you know, I, I've always enjoyed the subject of math, and so one day uh, I was asked by, I, I'm not sure if it was my landlord or one of her relatives, but uh, I think it was my landlord, Janice, she said, uh, would you mind tutoring my niece in mathematics? Her niece was going to a school a couple blocks away from, from the, the apartment that I rented, you know, a, a floor in, in her house, I should say. And, uh, you know, very nice young girl, you know. And uh, I, I said, sure, not a problem, you know. So I tutored her in my spare time outside of having to go to and from campus because I was taking a combination of offline campus-based brick-and-mortar classes and online classes at the time while living in downtown Boston for a little bit. And, um, you know, I tutored her niece on a number of occasions, you know, and um, I try to give her some, some tips about, you know, if you see this type of problem, remember this, you know, um, that kind of thing. And I got along great with her, you know, I got along great with her family, you know, and, um, and so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm so far from being racist. It's not even funny. You know, mm -hmm. if, if anybody, if any nationality out there were to say, come up to me in person offline and say, can you tutor me in mathematics or can you teach me how to use a computer? 
yeah, I will help the person. No matter sure. what their nationality is, no matter what their background is, I will help the person if they truly want help. You know, um, I have no idea how the girl did in her class after that, but I just know, and as God is my witness, because he saw the whole thing from the get-go, um, he knows that I tutored this young girl. He saw the whole thing happen. And also, that same family, my landlord's uh, sister slash aunt, uh, she stopped by on occasion. And, well, at least, no, I think she lived there, if I remember correctly. And I talked to her on occasion, and uh, my landlord described to me one time how um, her sister had has trouble walking and getting up and down a flight of stairs because of an epidural going wrong at the hospital when she had her daughter who I tutored like I mentioned earlier and uh another reason uh you know moon and got to just put this uh this Brian moon and little propaganda hit piece against us and Phelps and and Ho or uh yeah Hoven yeah right <laughs> and against uh Ruckman um you know uh the, you know we made this statement she made this statement in our video about free birthing about how that if your child is born at the hospital they will have problems and the, the mothers will have problems too mm -hmm. sometimes but anyways go ahead i just wanted to say that no not a problem so you know my landlord explained me at the time in you know january or february of 2011 that her her aunt is now disabled you know, she walks kind of with a, a limp, you know, and she needs assistance when she goes up and down a flight of stairs. And when she told me that, I thought to myself, what in the world is an epidural? You know, how, what went wrong? And, you know, out of, the good, out of the goodness of my heart, I helped her up and down, you know, whatever stairs she needed help with, you know. Um, and another, another situation that shows that I'm not racist also in the same time period uh the house next door to where I had my apartment my rented apartment at the time it was a family of I think the the black couple had like 11 children if I'm not mistaken and I thought wow talk about a big family in a small house next door you know and um and so I it just so happens that one day I was out shoveling the sidewalk from ice and snow because in in downtown Boston if you're not shoveling away the snow after the snow ends within 24 hours you'll get fined and um, and so I met the couple they were like teachers in one of the schools in the region and uh, I was out picking away at the at the ice and the snowy sidewalk with my steel shovel and they struck up a conversation with me and you know and they were trying to use their plastic um, shovel, you know, the the part that you, whatever it's called, that you actually scoop up the, the snow with. Um, they had a plastic shovel. And they were having problems picking away the ice to get their sidewalk clear. And I said, here, you need one of these. And I held up my steel shovel. And I said, steel gets through ice without a problem. You know, you just got to do it like this. And I showed them how to do it. And they're like, wow, you're really good at this. And I said, well, you know, I've, I've done it a couple times in my life. And they're like, I can imagine you're from Iowa, aren't you? Because, you know, they saw my license plates at the time. And I said, yeah, I guess you could say I've, I've run into a couple of snowstorms throughout my life. And, you know, and I said, so just get a steel shovel, make sure it's metal and you'll have no problem getting through the ice and snow and you'll be able to clear your sidewalk off like this and I did a, a block of the sidewalk you know one square and I said that's what steel does plastic mm -hmm. won't do that then the same on the same token my other neighbor on the other side of the place that I rented for a little bit uh, she came from somewhere in the Caribbean I think years ago and she had at least one child and she told me about her family background a little bit and she was complaining one day um you know I just don't understand why the city has to fine you if you don't come out here and and scoop away the the snow within a certain amount of time and I said yeah that is pretty stupid you know um I said have you actually bluntly asked the office you know the uh the taxation office or whatever it's called 
in the city of Boston, have you actually asked them where this funding, this money that they receive from the fees that they tax people for, for not shoveling the snow away after a snowstorm within a certain amount of time? Have you actually asked them where that funding goes to? Or maybe it's because their funding actually just buys these stupid machines that somehow can't get to all the parts of the city efficiently to, you know, clear away the streets, you know? And I remember asking her something to that effect, and it's funny because the next time I saw her, a few days later, I said, how did your meeting with the city office go? And she's like, it's funny, it's just like you said it would occur. They gave me this runaround of talk to this person, talk to that person, talk to this office, talk to that office. And she said, you were dead right. You know, you were right on with what you said about how they would react, you yep. know? And so again, you know, I have helped out so many different types of nationalities in my life. And they have helped you. Yes. And, and in you, fact, and you're thankful for it. Yes. You know, it, it's so it's, it's, what the reason the whole reason we're doing this video i know a lot of people are probably saying why are you even wasting your time on this thing because there's a lot of new christians that come along they get saved here they're learning the bible here and they type in they forget my channel name or something like that and they type in brian denlinger or something and or Catherine denlinger and there's videos coming up just land blasting us just attacking us calling us all kinds of names and all kinds of things and you know i just I wanted to break, bring this thing out just as a, a witness, as a testimony, saying, no, we do not hate people of other races, to use the modern word. We are not racist. We do not believe in a superior race, and others should be eliminated or something like that. Not at all. Okay? Um, do you have anything else you were going to share there, your uh, military well, thing? Well, I have a few military stories to, to tell again. Well, we're... Um, this... Uh, I have a couple of stories from here. Um, this petty officer, LS2 Nantichai. Well, you aren't going to be able to see it. Um, um, if you want to. Just. I, we'll, I think we'll just, you know, maybe tell a story or two, but don't. Okay. Don't tell too many here. Just because, <laughs> for sake of time, I'm trying to keep this thing fairly short. Um, I'll just record this way and then I'll edit this video in. This girl right here, um, you know, she was in my PCB, LS2 Nantichai, right there. Uh, she, I think she might be Thai or something. Um, but anyhow, she was in my PCB, and uh, one night I went into the, to the hygiene trailer, the shower trailer, you know, near our PCB building, and uh, I was brushing my teeth. She comes in, and she, like, asked me a question. And the funny thing is, I kind of developed, you know, with the Lord's help, I, I developed a little bit of a speaking in tongues with toothpaste kind of language that only, you can only get if you understand, you know, like, uh, if you understand, like, nonverbal gestures of, like, you know, that kind of thing or, like, whatever I was pointing at. And I explained to her how to understand the language. <laughs> I just made up one night and the next time she came into to the to the shower trailer you know the next night I brushed my teeth and everything we were actually conversing in my made-up toothpaste language you know and everybody that walked in and out of the trailer at the time they looked at us like what are you talking about mm -hmm. and it's funny because we understood each other because she understood my made-up language no, yep. but you know, just looking at the, you know, the modern military, all different, you know, kindreds of people, all different tongues, all different nations, mm -hmm. and it just ran smoothly, and there was never any problems, right? Oh sure, yeah, uh huh. And another person right here, this sailor right here, she was the one that told me, as I said in my testimony a few years ago, she told me if you don't calm down, you're going to be sent to Germany, and I said, huh? What's in Germany? She said, you'll be, uh, you'll undergo a psychological evaluation at the hospital in Germany. And, uh, you know, at the time I thought ignorantly, well, it'd be nice to return my, my ancestors' homeland. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to go to a stupid psychiatric hospital for an evaluation. So, you know, if I was racist, 
she would have sensed it and she never would have told me that. You know, if I was racist, she would have gotten some kind of a weird vibe of me supposedly being that way. And <clears throat> I got along great with, with those two. Yeah. So, you know, we could keep going on with different stories. I mean, I've worked with people of different kindreds. I've been to Central America a couple of times on mission trips. You know, the children down there loved me and I got along great with them. You know, I was like the tallest guy in the country, I think, at the time in Honduras. And so I was like lifting children up. They're probably like, I've never been up this high before with somebody. But, you know, we're not racist is the whole thing. And and I just want I just want to say, too, go ahead, tell your story, and then I'm going to finish. I have two more things really quick. Number one, I witnessed to a, to a Hispanic, whether, whatever nationality he is, that was walking near the Catholic Church in my hometown area, you know, I gave him a tract. I remember witnessing to him when I was still in Iowa. And another thing is, is um, when I was stationed at APG Maryland for my mobilization orders at the time in the army, um, I had I had asked for the same thing so often at the chow hall that the Hamite workers that served up the hot breakfast that I'd get almost all the time, almost every time I came in, one look at me. They saw one look at me and they're like, you want bacon, eggs, and hash browns, don't you? And I'm like, huh? I, I didn't even get it out. How did you know? They're like, you always order the same thing. You know, on days like such and such, you come in and you order this type of cereal. You know, and I'm like, whoa, okay, <laughs> thank you very much. You know, they gave me travel advice, mm -hmm. travel tips, and they said, uh, you know, if we, if, uh, by the time you come in, you know, um, if you don't find the type of cereal that you want in the morning, just let us know, you know, we'll get it for you. And the next time that happened, uh, I came in and I was like, I don't see cereal such and such. This one black lady, you know, says, you know what? I reserved a box or two just for you before you came in because I knew you would look for cereal such and such. So, you know, I'm not racist. I will help out anybody of any nationality that asks for my help. Sure. I hope we've proved that point by now. I know to some people they aren't concerned with facts. They're just going to continue their propaganda and their lies against us. Whatever. You'll be judged by God. But uh, I just want to say this, too, in closing, and that is, uh, I know from experience, I've listened to a lot of Dr. Ruckman's uh, things and stuff like that. Uh, he's led many, many, many people of other kindreds to the Lord. Okay, he's converted quite a few. And I dare say a lot of these people that are all, you know, coming down on Ruckman and everything else, they haven't won a tenth of the people of other kind, excuse me, other kindreds that Ruckman has. All right, it's a problem. But secondly, uh, Ruckman actually had a nurse because for a while he went through a divorce uh, big story there you know again people say oh he's disqualified from ministry uh, uh no when your wife leaves you and there's nothing that you can do about it that doesn't disqualify you from the ministry right there are scriptural grounds for divorce in first corinthians chapter seven and when it says the husband of one wife it means the one wife at that time okay why how do you know that what if a guy's wife dies and he gets remarried that's his second wife. See? Well, that's okay, but a man can't be scripturally divorced and continue in ministry. See, again, people will lie about Peter Ruckman. They won't tell you all the truth about what happened there. But while he was a single father, he had five children. While he was a single father, I think it was during that time, he actually had a, like a, um, a nanny, basically, and she was black. She was a black woman. So he had a black woman raising his children. They weren't married. She was an older black woman. But I thought he was some kind of a racist, you know, bigot that hates black people. Not at all. And as far as Eric Phelps, his uh, pro baptical thing, uh, I understand why he takes that stand. Uh, he's trying to say, okay, and, and, you know, if you listen to him, he's saying, okay, the blacks go over that way, the whites go over this way. He's not saying... Blacks go there so we can, the whites can come in and kill them. No, he's saying, hey, let's stay separate. It'll cause less violence. It'll cause less problems and whatever else. He doesn't hate people of other races, of other kindreds. 
So watch out for the mainstream media trying to label Bible-believing Christians as racist. That's not the kind of attack a Bible-believing Christian would use. All right. So I just wanted to clarify that because I know a lot of people are all uptight about this thing and they're they're falsely accusing us and everything. You need to be real careful, by the way, when you falsely accuse those that are in ministry. All right. The Lord is doing great things through this ministry. And I'm not saying we're perfect or inerrant or we have some kind of a, you know, papal infallibility or something. No, 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 no. But the Bible says against an elder receive not an accusation but before two or three witnesses. All right. And you don't have any witnesses against us to prove that we are racist. We are not racist. That is a lie. That is slander. That is libel. Okay, if you want to use legal terminology. All right. Don't lie about us. Okay. I am, I have, I believe I've proved the fact that I am a preacher that God has used mightily and I'm humbled by that. And I continue in ministry because the Lord wants me to continue in the ministry. And when the Lord gave me my wife here, the ministry took a whole new direction. Now I have somebody that can help me. You know, for a long time before I got married, I was like, I can't keep going on. I, I, I just can't do this. And it was, people were like, well, you need help. And I was like, yeah, I know, but it's, I, I can't just get another guy to help me because I've done that. And there's jealousy issues that come in. There's other contention and pride and whatever else. I can't have another guy as part of the ministry. It has to be a wife. And people are like, well, you're never going to find a woman that thinks like you. And I got the same you thing know, put on me by my parents. Sure. But let me, let me, don't, don't break my point here. You know, and why did they say that? That I'm never going to find another woman that thinks like me. You know why? Because at the time I was going after Spanish women. Spanish women don't think like I do. There were differences there. All the ones that I ever met, the, you know, even in their countries. Okay. I was guilty of crossing the bounds and, you know, everything else. I was trying to get a Spanish wife, and there were huge differences between us. Huge differences between the, the way our minds thought, you know. And I'm glad I didn't get a Spanish wife. I'm glad the Lord brought me a German wife that could be my helpmate in the ministry. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you are not of the same kindred, there's going to be some problems. Why? Because the Bible says so. And you say, but there were people in the Bible that were mixed in marriage. Yeah, and they had problems. Yes, they did. So we could keep going on and on and on, but I just wanted to make this video quickly. It's uh, just about an hour. <laughs> so much for a quick video. But, uh, hey, you know, <laughs> that's just the way it's going to be. I uh, just wanted to put this thing out, and um, that is going to be it. And uh, please keep us in your prayers because we... We do get attacked and things, and it just it, it gets wearying after a while. You know, we're trying to do things and, and, and stuff. And, and, you know, again, I'm going to be talking more about this thing of people attacking me and some of the, the common tactics, and I'm going to be answering some of that stuff. And it just kind of irritates me because so many of these people claim to have learned much from me, and then they turn around and attack me. And that gets a little bit old after a while. So uh, that's going to be it for this video. And we thank you for your prayers and we thank you for watching.